We're going to hit shift D and duplicate that uh, insole and from there just move it slightly up and subdivision modifier we're going to add the uncage that way we can see the grid lines on the subdivision surface and we're just going to work on scaling and adjust that singular piece upward while working on this top layer right need to also be conscious of you know that you need to rotate and navigate and check all angles because that padding is going to need to sit on top of the previous one with a bit of a buffer on the sides um, so just working on that shape there you go in this part of the tutorial I'm not going to be saying a lot of keyboard shortcuts because I almost feel like it's a bit redundant this is an intermediate level of modeling um, I recommend you know doing a lot simpler shapes before even taking on this, this sort of tutorial now we're gonna select the front faces let's rotate nah, that's a good angle all right we're gonna select um, this top two faces and then E extrude upward I said I wasn't gonna say any keyboard shortcuts and I just said E. <laughs> uh, boy, okay. So just scale it to, uh, let's see, for one of the reasons, positioning is not working. All right, it's a bit sharp. Um, what I wanna do is select that top face and move it upward to where it's not so sharp. It's where it appears soft. If you are following along, you should have something like this. Uh, let's turn on, let's turn, up, turn down the subdivision, and then what I want to do is just move that shape back a bit, to the vertices, and move these vertices forward on the y-axis. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. So with the side edges selected, we're gonna extrude it downward that way we have that soft edge that's gonna pop upward on the really insole of the actual bottom hill there you go Ooh, that thing looking fly all right okay in edit mode we're gonna go to the top view I know this part of it sticking out you're gonna notice um, little details. This is where you spend that extra time adjusting the shape, um, especially if you're following a actual um, blueprint for any product design um, or a drawing that is uh, or has specific specs, I should say. Let's spin it one time and just observe and look at this beauty. All right, so from here, we're gonna go to the side view in the object mode and then select the front part of the design. Then tab into edit mode, go to face selection, and then let's just go ahead and select a couple of faces in the front. Let's hide our reference. And then just go ahead and select them. You can try to shift select or doing one by one like I'm doing let's see did I miss one yeah oh, where did I miss the bottom face right here okay this is where sometimes you can turn off your subdivision surface modifier and be able to see the geometric shape planes clear but we're gonna go ahead and shift D to separate by selection um, and then with this piece what we're gonna do is let's just move it to forward a little bit Let's go ahead and isolate it and tap into edit mode. We're going to dissolve that bottom edge. We don't necessarily need it. Or if dissolve doesn't work, you're gonna probably have to delete it. Um, delete all those vertices in the bottom. And it's just adjust the vertices a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna work on shaping this front piece so that way it uh, overlaps on top of the previous layer. Um, 
I am going to speed this part up. So just go ahead and adjust your vertices, um, your vertex points on the Y and X axis. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up. One of the techniques I found incredibly useful or keyboard shortcuts, I should say, is aligning, scaling to align. So for example, using S in alignment with the Y axis and setting that to zero will straighten um, the vertices or edges, whatever you have selected to that orientation direction. Extremely useful in many cases, whether you're modeling something like this, which, which has a lot of curves, um, which is why I love the high hills. They have a lot of curves, but all right. So yeah, back to what I was saying. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna get back to the adjustment and shape of the, this front piece. On the opposite side, um, just work on that shape. The high heel is not perfectly symmetrical like all shoes. So we need to just um, work on adjusting these vertices manually. In x-ray mode, you can use Alt-Z or um, Shift-Z to see through the shape. Sometimes I use this to allow me to see the opposite side uh, vertices or edges. If I want to somewhat align them together or if it's something that's perfectly symmetrical that requires that I do that. Um, but usually with any project, if you are aware that it's going to be perfectly or, or close to symmetrical, you can just use the mirror modifier. Model one side, save yourself headache and time um, it'll lead to more proficiency you'll be able to model more and yeah you just get better overall all right once you are satisfied with the overall shape you're going to need to shrink wrap it to that top layer for it to stick and for the overall flow to be a bit more smooth um, and once you add the shrink wrap modifier you're going to need to make sure you drag it up top um, it should be the very first uh, modifier that you add and we're going to reduce the or just work on the measurements for the actual thickness i think 0 0.01 meters is good and then with the bottom, yeah, with the bottom edges selected, we're gonna go ahead and again, very useful um, combination of shortcuts. We're gonna go ahead and uh, S Z zero, so that way it's flat, and then just adjust that. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and move this up. Let's just work on the shape. I just wanna bring it back. There you go. Here, we're going to add an edge loop to both the bottom and top parts right here. That way we have a sharper um, curve. The only thing you need to be cautious of is with the additional edge loops, your shape may have some, um, you know, either artifacts or have indentations. So you'll need to either use double G to slide the vertices as you need them. And also your shrink wrap modifier at this point needs to be applied. And then, you know, that way you'll be able to move that layer off of the previous layer. Because at this point we don't need the shrink wrap modifier. It served this purpose. Now we need a bit more um, separation between the two layers. In this next portion, we're going to work on the stitches. We are going to get stitched up, get stitched up. Well, not us getting stitched up, but you understand what I'm saying. We're going to work on the stitches. Now we're going to apply the solidify modifier. Let's just go ahead and do that. And also apply the subdivision surface modifier. I do have to mention that I recommend duplicating that layer before and backing it up in a separate folder in your outline or saving the actual file as a backup 
because you never know you might need to come back to that shape and if you've solidify it then you know you can't go back to that um, modifier version of it all right in order to select the edge we need to flow around we're going to select the outermost edge because the edge path doesn't flow well but it does on the outer edge if that makes sense um, so we're gonna make sure we select the outer edge all the way up to the top corner because that's really all we need for this next step and we're going to duplicate it so we're gonna need to duplicate and separate it and then from there um, that's what we're gonna use as our path for the stitch that we're going to create once you have that or that flow of edge um, separated let's delete the bottom extra vertices and edges then with our loop tools we're going to evenly distribute uh, the spacing um, once you have that we can use the proportional edit to select the vertices and use the fall off of the, the proportional edit tool to then just form adjust our shape um, which is what I'm doing right here so I'm gonna work on this Another function I love once you go to edge mode in the selection area or selection menu, you can select all of the edges and then check or deselect. And then it will check or deselect the piece. And then from there, you can either invert selection uh, if you don't have the proper length of edges selected and then literally just delete them you're left with an evenly distributed um, path of edges that you'll be able to scan to create your stitches once you have the edges and edge selection mode you're going to add the skin modifier and mark it as root and then control a to scale it down because it's going to be big i don't know why it comes in that awkward that's beyond me but you're gonna scale it down um, to a size that makes sense for you I recommend using reference images uh, look at stitches on on the high heels those that do have them and compare them with your own um, model and from here we're going to go to object mode select the stitches and make sure it's on the surface if yours is not on the surface, you could attempt to use the shrink wrap modifier, or you should have made sure that when you um, were using the proportional tool to adjust the vertices that it was as close to the skin as possible. Repeat the process for the opposite side, and there you go. This part of creating the stitches specifically for that back piece is complete. You are a rock star for making it this far. Your support and interaction through a comment, share, or like will help many more people see this tutorial. So share the love. Now let's get back into it. While we're here, we're going to take a face, shift D, separate it. And that's going to serve us as our inner soul pad label. We're just gonna go ahead and adjust that, set the origin to geometry. Um, and then from there, we're gonna add an edge loop, add a bit more uh, geometry to that label. Not a ton, I think just two or three will suffice. Let's see, let's scale it inward. We're going to need some edge loops towards uh, to slide um, towards the top and bottom or the end edges. That way we can have a more square label, not something that looks like a pill or weird oval shape. Um, in order to do this too, you know, this is where I, I like to utilize the scale scale to orientation axis. So scaling it to the Y axis, scaling it to the X to get these straight edges. And yeah, now just fix, we just resolved something that was crooked, now it's straight. We're gonna add a bit more geometry because we're gonna end up shrink wrapping it to that bottom or to that curved surface. 
there you go and then slide that above the subdivision surface and add a solidify to it reduce the size of the solidify uh, um, and in some cases you may need to offset completely um, or you can uh, leave the offset and just uh, negatively adjust the size but sometimes what that will cause is a normal error you you won't really notice them until you go into um, the normal face orientation it's one of those positive and disciplined um, things that you need to practice to get in the habit of uh, fa face orientation proper quad topology avoiding in guns as much as possible um, you know you can use them in the flat services but I you know I've, I've learned to just go ahead and make uh, everything quad if I can help it um, just good practices I am going to work on the stitch for this front part, which will use the same uh, technique that we use for that back piece. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to use a, a similar technique, but with this one, I will speed it up, but I, let me explain it to you. With your subdivision or your modifiers, even the solidify still on, you're going to go ahead into the edge selection mode and just go ahead and select the edges around, right? Leave your modifiers on, but then you're going to shift D to separate it and then um, apply the solidify and subdivision modifier to that edge. And you should still get the same result, you know, that we got before. It's insane. It's been two videos and we're 20 minutes into this one and I've showed you the entire process, but there's this tiny detail I'm going to add to the back of the hill using the shear tool and blender. That's another tool that I believe is somewhat underused, but insanely val valuable because you have the edge slide, which works perfectly for this for shapes that would be a bit harder to model. So I'm just going to go ahead and shift D and apply that um, apply that face detail where I'm going to pop it out. A very subtle detail um, in the back of the hill. Let's just go ahead and select those faces. And I'm going to add a, I don't need the front of it, just the sides. So I'm going to add a subdivision su surface modifier and solidifier modifier. Um, just to give it a subtle accent in the back it's not a plain hill and then I set the origin to geometry and just go ahead and scale that and the edges look a little wonky so what we're gonna do is bring the solidify up top increase that just like that And with the loop cut edge tool, I'm gonna go ahead and just create those loop cuts and slide them to the edge to make it a lot sharper. And look at that. Um, I noticed that, again, subtle little details. And you can spend so many, so much time refining and being so nitpicky on your models, but you really gotta be aware that <laughs> certain things are not even gonna be noticed by people unless they're also 3D modelers and they're overly examining um, your creation. You now should know how to design high hills and Blender in 3D. In the next tutorial, we are going to go over the setup for the brand 